Today on our Community Spotlight, we're talking to Gavin Brady, a Senior Energy Advisor from Warm Up Rural North East Fife. Gavin works for the Fife-based environmental charity St Andrews Environmental Network. Warm Up Rural North East Fife is part of the Cozy Kingdom Initiative. Um, all looking towards uh, carbon reduction um, and uh, other sort of environmental initiatives and things. Specifically, I work as an energy advisor, senior energy advisor, um, on the project Warm Up Rural North East Fife, which is a rural outreach project. So I'm able to provide, or we're able to provide, um, energy advice and services, um, including debt advice, to people who uh, work, live in sort of the rural community, KY15 uh, and uh, KY14 codes, which obviously is quite a large catchment, as you know, with the uh, Haven FM broadcasting across um, the Howe Fife. So within that region, we work with typically uh, people who ha- are sometimes off gas mains grid, so looking at other energy sources, um, electric being primary, uh, gas, LPG. And obviously right now it's hot topic with a lot of the, the, the energy costs going up so much, which is why we are on hand. The project's been running for two years now, and we're just entering the last phase of the project, which is due to um, end in uh, September 2022. Um, and it's been vastly successful so far it's been um compared to other projects we work as part of the cozy kingdom project as well um but specifically for the outreach the rural outreach project this is how we come in we're able to help people if they have big questions small questions about their their energy usage about their supply if they've got issues with um their heating systems we are able to sort of advise and, and work closely with them to see if there's any funding or grant support available uh, for heating uh, any changing of the systems down to renewables as well additionally with this project we've got a wee blue van uh, that a lot of the, the people in northeast fife might have seen uh, floating around where we're able to go out and install energy saving measures um, for free for people as well so the likes of curtains draft proofing low energy lighting anything to really reduce um, people's usage at the moment Fantastic, Gavin. Thank you. Um, so listen, there's a lot to pick through because you're doing a lot yes. there and there's a, yeah. that's kind of multi-layered, isn't it? Um, including sort of help with bills. So can we kind of start with that? Um, price caps increasing. Uh, obviously, yep. it's the second. It, it's going to go up. And um, the warnings are that as we get into winter, it's, it's, it's going to increase again. What's the price yep. cap, Gavin? Tell us what's going on there. What's, what does that mean? Good question. Very good question. Hot topic as well. So this, the price cap is, uh, in the most basic terminology, is the maximum amount an energy supplier is allowed to charge you per unit of electricity and your standing charge. So that is the most basic level. That is set at uh, the government level, working with Ofgem, who govern all of the energy uh, companies. Um, how that is reflected is it's reviewed every six months. So that's why we've just had, it feels like we've just had that big price increase on April 1st. And now we're looking towards um, the government speaking about and off gem looking at the price increase in April for uh, October 1st, sorry. Um, it's reviewed six monthly. And if there's a change in wholesale prices, if there's a political change, if there's an issue with supplies and things, um, then that will generally be reflected in prices. We saw during the pandemic, during the price uh, reviews, the price was then going down um, and the, the energy costs were very, very low. Um, now, because of the various things that there's probably not no need to get into just now the big heady subject but the yeah. the, um, the stuff that's going on in the world that has seen a, a vast increase in the wholesale price uh, hydrocarbon price and electric so energies um, and that is then being passed on to the energy companies have to buy that energy in to then sell on at that point, the, the consumer, us, uh, we are then, we have to pay more for per unit, um, which is very, very complicated just now. They are looking to um, floating the idea of having a review every three months. So that could capture, there's been a period recently in the past couple of weeks where energy costs have dipped slightly. Um, and if we move the review period um, to be quarterly, then there might be a benefit for the consumers as to see that we can see these benefits when the production is going up and down. Uh, the, the, it's instead of these massive increases that we're seeing just now. Um, what, however it shakes down, it means that for across the board, all energy costs have gone up. And yep. that's certainly reflected in our bills at home and obviously in the 
prices of everything because <laughs> everything needs yeah. energy to do that. But specifically about home, um, first of all, if, if people are worried about their bills and um, the increases, um, what, what, who can they speak to, Gavin? What's the practical things they can do um, to, to kind of cut through the jargon? <clears throat> yeah, great question. If people are finding themselves in crisis just now or they've got concerns about their energy bills, um, so that could be shock energy bills or it could be an issue where... Uh, down to the meter reading technology. So sometimes if you've had lots of estimated bills and then you get a final meter reading, you can get a big uh, unexpected jump. The first protocol would always be to speak to the energy supplier directly um, the, to clarify with the energy supplier exactly how that debt has been accrued if, or the cost, just to make sure because they are ultimately the ones which you have the contract with. Make sure that you can clarify where that's come from and you're happy where that, uh, that extra cost has come from. If you've got concerns then, it would be then speaking to, and Pfeiffer very lucky, Lucky to have um, sort of a, a really uh, well oiled uh, machine for the energy advice. So it'd be getting in touch with an organization, a charity like St. Andrew's Environmental Network with Cozy Kingdom, who we're a partner with as well. We can provide impartial free energy advice. Through the Cozy Kingdom project as well, we provide debt uh, advice as well. So the Cozy Kingdom project is Fife wide. So if people are listening out with the KY14, KY15 areas and things, the, the Cozy Kingdom project, uh, we've got a team of energy advisors, all experts. We are able to provide free and partial advice to, to help uh, support um, people who might be confused or have issue with the bills. If there's periods of crisis as well, we are also uh, work very, very closely with citizens advice and the money advice team as well. So if people are finding issue just now, it's to come and get in touch with us because we're always here to help. That's why we exist. Brilliant, Gavin. And, and it's worth re underlining and reinforcing that is, I, I, I guess, you know, we've all been there. The, no, the kind of, your instinct is to hide away and, yep. and kind of not address these things, but that's probably not a good. Uh, it's not a good idea. Get in touch, you know, as you say, with the energy provider, and if you need more assistance, then the help is available. But that's about yep. the actual cost of energy, and then the second yep. part of it is how can we how can we save energy? Because uh, because that would be also these two things go hand in hand. But of if the course. cost is going up, then you know, we really want to be looking at just where it is all going, how much it's costing, yeah. and are we yeah. are we wasting any? How can we do something about that? The, the biggest changes that we can make, Ian, would be looking at um, the, the changes in sort of the temperature settings that you've got. Obviously, hopefully, we've moved into the warmer weather. Uh, however, it's Scotland, so, you know, four seasons in a day and all that. The biggest changes that we can make in the home is reducing the actual, uh, how hard the, the heating systems are, are working. So if you've got a room thermostat, uh, which will generally have the, the degrees up the side so you can set the, the central heating temperature, we would always advise keeping that between 18 and 21 degrees. Every degree you turn that down by will generally save about £105 a year. So reducing the overall temperature off the property. If you're one of these people who will just crank up to get the heating system to come on, pop up to 25, we wouldn't, we wouldn't advise doing that. We've all got the, if you've got a, a central heating system, the, the radiator valves, which people have, we've always had them, they kind of, people forget about them, fit and forget technology. We are advising most people, if you're using the, the TRVs, the thermostatic radiator valves, is to have them set between two, uh, halfway between two and three. Uh, that will probably yield uh, a saving on the overall gas bill or electric bill, uh, depending on your heating system, because the, the thermostat on the radiator will only ever allow the radiator to get up to a certain temperature, the room temperature, and then it will cut itself off. So then you're not using as much gas and things to get up. The other big change is that we're, we're going towards what I would call the stuff my granny used to say to me. And then the most basic thing, turning the big light off and things like that. One of the main things we can reduce our energy usage by is those behavioral changes. So what I mean by that is if you've got rooms which we aren't using, you've got your heating system on, turn the, the heating system off in those rooms, making sure you've got the doors closed, making sure your windows and doors externally are closed as well. If you're noticing the drafts, especially this time of year where it's a bit windier, um, then it's looking at how we can remedy those drafts. Generally, you're, you're typically losing sort of 10-15% uh, of your all your energy costs out of the ventilation heat loss. So that's like windows and doors, the wee gaps and things. Getting those sealed up, really easy DIY, really cost-effective ways to do things. 
big changes that can be made in kitchens well. We're talking a lot about slow cookers. A lot of people um, are trying to, uh, we all have a need to cook. We're not going out for as many meals just now because every penny counts. Slow cookers, microwaves, using them as much as possible to, to heat up food. They're most energy efficient ways to be cooking. But a lot of behavioral changes, uh, which anywhere you go online, any social media stream, you see these energy companies pushing all these behavioral changes, making sure that you're turning thermostats down making sure the washes in your washing machine at 30 degrees or lower, making sure you've got things set up in timers. Um, and it's the, the, one of the big things that a lot of people are, are missing out on, which used to be pushed quite a lot, is making shopping around for tariffs because these fixed tariff deals are right now a thing of the past. What we're trying to advise is the same as when you hear a uh, money saving expert, Martin Lewis, and all these big experts talking about it, is stay put just now because the, the price rise on these fixed tariff deals, there is no price cap. There's there's no guarantee of the maximum amount. So if you if you go into these deals, which are generally fixed for 18, 24 months, you might be paying over the odds for what the, the maximum amount on that standard variable tariff, that price cap. Um, so just a couple of ideas. You can obviously, there's always very tailored um, ways that we can provide advice to people. Every property is different everyone has different sort of heating demands and things which is why being in fife having a project like this is a saving grace for people just to contact us and ask the quick question um a, a quick question on um what about hot water because obviously a lot of people have turned their central heating off because yep. we're in we're in the summer months now yeah um, but they'll probably keep the hot water do you keep your what's that old myth about do you keep the do you keep the hot water on all the time and then the thermostat controls it what, what's the best thing to do about whole water it would depend on your situation so if you know you've got a high demand if you've got all kinds of people in the property if you've got 10 people living there you're probably going to need uh, hot water on demand. Um, what we would always advise is, depending on the, the type of tariff you're on, so it could be a, a nighttime tariff where your hot water uh, can be on in the evening time. You've got a nice big insulated tank, so it should stay warm for the whole day. We would always advise from an energy point of view is to set up a timer. So if you know when the, the highest heating demands and uh, water demands are going to be, probably in the morning or when you come back from work and you're doing some dishes, if you, if you know that, it's having the timer set around a couple of hours before the, uh, you know you've got those showers in the morning or those showers in the evening or the, the cooking time. It's making sure you're setting up those timers accordingly with your schedule in the home. Not having on 24-7, um, especially just now, every penny counts. Also, when you're looking at saving the water by setting up your timers, it is also reducing the amount of time and the amount of hot water that you're using as well. So if we're having a shower, we're always saying a four minute shower is the most energy efficient to try and get everything done um, in the time. If you've got kids, you know, it's probably quite difficult to say a four minute shower and not a 24 <laughs> minute shower. <laughs> yeah, sure. Teenagers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, can we talk about insulation? Because that's another big mm -hmm. part of how we yep. can kind of save, um, particularly when you were talking about the drafts and the various things around the house, um, and now they, they're really quite critical. But insulation yep. in the attic and everything, any any help? Where do you begin to kind of look at that and kind of assess how your how your house is? How, you know, where, where you are? Great question. A really easy a uh, simple method is if you've got your loft insulation, you, you pop your head up there and you see all the, 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 the rock wool type insulation, the, the material. If that's the big fluffy insulation, to make sure that that's up to standards, the, the generally recommended uh, standard is a depth of 270 millimetres just now. What we would always say is if you've got a piece of A4, the length of that A4, that 30 centimetres. If, if it's around there, then you're, you're golden. If you're able to, if you have the space and it's safe to do so, there's no problem by having a top up of insulation as well. So you can put added insulation on top of that. Um, it's really useful to have a quick look. If you're never really up in the loft or maybe it's a rented property, and you have access to loft space, poke your head up there. If there's an issue, uh, then you can contact the landlord. Um, you can contact um, a housing officer if it's a rented property, anything like that. If you've just moved into the property and you're aware that the insulation might be under par, you can get in touch with either us 
um, the energy charity, or you can speak to Home Energy Scotland. So that's the government side of things, the Scottish equivalent of the Energy Savings Trust. They have a range of grants and schemes available that you might qualify for, some which uh, can provide free uh, energy saving measures for people in homes, so uh, like heating systems and insulation. There's a couple of other more technical routes, which is what we get involved in, is that we are able to go out and audit properties for people. So just have a quick look around, look for the telltale signs to see if there's been cavity wall insulation, if the property can have it. We've also got uh, access to tools such as thermal imaging cameras, which are fabulous when the weather's correct and it's the right situation, to see if there's insulation. That can also highlight if there's been a failure in insulation as well. We can then advise you and we can do that referral uh, through to Home Energy Scotland on behalf of clients. So there's a couple of tips and tricks. The a4 bit of paper is something easy, everyone is accessible. After you've listened to this and you think, I wonder, pop up to the attic, get A4 bit of paper and see if you're up to that 270 mil uh, uh, minimum. Queena, I'm speaking to you from the Jubilee Hall in Burnturk, obviously. That's 125 yep. years old. And yep. uh, my house is about 100 years old. Um, yep. They're quite old, high ceilings, you know, big windows. Uh, there's you know, where to begin to kind of mm-hmm. unpick that for for making it more efficient. But but it's a good idea to start, isn't it? Little, start somewhere. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, we When we look at heat loss in properties, there's two big schools of thought. You have your ventilation heat loss that we spoke about earlier, and you've got your fab heat loss, which is basically how well the actual fabric of the building uh, retains that heat, the thermal mass of it all. And old properties, which we're blessed with and cursed with in Northeast Fife specifically, um, they are, uh, there's a lot more consideration um, required. There is, if you know there's a bit of a renovation project going on just now, I would always advise looking at trying to get some, maybe that uh, internal wall insulation, sort of poly ISO boards and things in the walls to make sure you're getting the, the, the benefit while you're doing the work. Uh, otherwise, it's quite a big upheaval. There are tips and tricks that I'm aware of, insulating paint, insulating uh, wallpapers and things, which are fabulous. Um, but it's, again, a bit of an upheaval if you're going to be doing that work. Mm. Um, but it's, it's certainly there's, there's all kinds of... The technology is moving on because there's just so much more of a demand for it just now as well. Uh, in terms of investing in the long term, you know, so yep. people are coming up to, you know, the the um, the end of their uh, life on their boiler or a gas boiler and various other things. And I know that in some parts of the rural uh, northeast Fife, the choice is limited in terms yep. of what energy is available. But heat pumps and solar panels and things, how how um, how realistic is it that we can be looking at those kind of options now, Gam? Very realistic. These are things we're seeing rolled out constantly. Um, the, the heat pumps specifically, there are some extra considerations. As an energy advisor, I'm completely impartial, so it's the good, bad and the ugly. Um, the, the heat pumps are a fantastic technology, really tried and tested throughout uh, on European continent and things. They are, are fabulous. Um, the way that they work is quite different so there's a bit of a behavioral change between what we'd expect with hitting the the button and getting the house up to temperature in half an hour the heat pumps work 24 7 and they produce a low ambient temperature throughout the heat pumps are very very efficient they always talk about this coefficient when anybody's looking up heat pumps the coefficient value so that would be one kilowatt of energy out three or four kilowatts of usable heat out and that's always the, the the rule of thumb that's always in the jargon what we would say is if you are thinking about having a heat pump installed just now, especially if you're in sort of northeast Fife and you're looking at a replacement for all electric or oil or LPG, which is where these systems really come into play, is that making sure the having extra consideration towards your um, insulation in the property. A property needs to be insulated up to a certain standard. Um, the technical guys are great at having a look to make sure everything's okay because what you'll be doing is if you've got a, maybe an older, draftier property, you put this heat pump in, which is a very low level of heat constantly, and it builds up. If you're losing a lot of heat out of the fabric, heat loss, the ventilation heat loss, those drafts, or you've got problems with the actual fabric of the building. Um, it might You might find it will be quite costly to run because the heat pump's trying to work harder and harder and harder, the compressor's running. But in most situations, if you're putting it into a newer property, that's a fabulous technology. We work a lot with um, heat pumps in Northeast Fife. There's also a network is which you can go around and see other uh, users within Northeast Fife to have the user hand-on experience as well to see how they got on with it. With It could also be biomass boilers as well, which is another low-carbon alternative uh, to, to your conventional oil and um, LPG boilers. There's also... 
Um, certain incentives available just now as well for um, air source and ground source heat pumps. So right now, more than ever, it's having that initial conversation um, and seeing if it's worthwhile. We all know we've, we've heard the decarbonisation of heat and we're moving towards that. Um, if you know that your boiler needs replacing right now or your heating system needs replacing, this is a time to consider that, but also have in the back of your mind, will I need to do other works to the property? Is my insulation up to standard? Does the property need to have draft roofing, et cetera, to make sure it's as efficient as possible? Gavin, I'm sure you're a very, very busy guy at the moment. It's, uh, you know, an underst understatement perhaps, but uh, we really, really appreciate what you guys are doing. And uh, um, thank you. So how do people get in touch? If people are wanting to get in touch for the general energy advice throughout Fife, if you just live in Fife, you want some advice, you can get in touch with Cozy Kingdom. You can reach us at cozykingdom.org.uk. You can, uh, there's chats and email addresses online. The best way for getting in touch uh, with them if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one appointment we'd be contacting probably via phone, which is 01592 807930. If you're in northeast Fife or Glenrothes area, getting in touch with St Andrews Environmental Network. We've got a lot of other um, projects on the go as well. Um, you can get in touch with us via the internet, which would be standrewsenvironmental.org. And again, you can get in touch with us via phone, which is the best way to get straight through to an advisor. It would be 01334 237 In summary then, what do, we, what do we need to think about um, in order to save some money and, and, and kind of ad, um, address this issue. Yeah, absolutely. So it's looking at those behavioural changes, probably the biggest uh, aspect. So are, do we need to have the oven on for that one one fish finger or whatever? Could <laughs> we be batch cooking? Can we reduce down the kilowatt usage, the actual physical usage? If you've got a smart meter, try to get, keep that level slightly lower. It's looking at trying to switch out. If we're maybe some people are still using old, uh, incandescent bulbs, which a lot of people are, 60 watt, 100 watt bulbs, looking at uh, maybe having those changed out. If you're able to look at the insulation and you think maybe there's no insulation or a lack of insulation, make sure we're getting that sorted out as well. The behavioural changes, having the heating turned down, have things set up on timer, opposed to having it um, on 24-7, as same as what we've spoken about with the, the water, have that set up on timers. Make sure if you do have an older water cylinder that you've got a jet it around it to insulate that as much as possible as well. All of these changes result in uh, sort of the, the bigger amounts, the yielding bigger savings that gets down to the other levels of boiling the kettle with the right amount of water, closing doors internally, closing the curtains at nighttime. All of these behavioural changes, the stuff that my granny used to say, yeah. all those changes make a big uh, difference on your usage and all of them cumulatively together, that's a, a, a sizable amount of money you can be saving per year. Sure. And let's get ready for winter. Well, we've, we've kind of got these lighter months. Giving the community a voice. Haver FM. How Community Radio. Mm -hmm.